Which eucalypt is the wartiest, squarest, weepiest, ribbiest, and which is the what? The Fitzgerald National Park on Western Australia's southern coastline is a place of exceptional beauty. From rolling plains, colourful breakaways, rugged peaks and dramatic headlands overlooking stunning beaches, it is well deserving of being protected. Incredibly, while the park has an area equivalent to just 0.2% of the state, it holds a whopping 20% of Western Australia's plant species. The park contains 1,800 species of plant, which is more than the entire British Isles. 250 of these plants are rare, and an amazing 62 species can only be found within the confines of the park. It's a botanical treasure trove. Eucalypt diversity in the park is off the charts. The strangest and gangliest forms that the entire genus Eucalyptus has to offer are well and truly overrepresented. The abundant diversity is due to, in part, the geological stability of the environment, as well as the fact that Eucalyptus seeds are generally not eaten by most animals that might spread them from location to location. So over many hundreds of thousands of years, some eucalypts have grown to become ultra specialized to small areas, sometimes just a few square kilometers. This has led to some very weird and wonderful diversity. Let's take a look at a few now. Eucalyptus megacanuta, or the warty yate, is very warty. Its long caps, or or percula that cover the stamens of the flowers are just a bit, well, gross. This species has a few small occurrences inside the park, but the main population covers an area of just 20 by 10 kilometers to the east of the nearby town of Ravensthorpe. Tetraptera. Tetrotera. Tetrotera. Eucalyptus tetrotera. The square fruited mallee has taken it to the four-sided dimension with a very defined square shape. This square-shaped fruit is also accented by wings at the corners. It is a relatively small mallee, only growing to a few metres tall, and it can be found throughout the park on the roadsides. And just to add to its uniqueness, it has one of the thickest leaves of any eucalypt. Eucalyptus sepulchrilis, or the weeping mallee, is such a cool eucalypt and I was super stoked to see it in the wild. Bending under its own weight, it looks a little like a weeping willow. It has a very restricted distribution in heathlands in the eastern part of the National Park. The weeping mallee is super easy to spot from a distance because the slender stems are always emergent, well above the surrounding heath. I reckon this is in my top 10 eucalypts for sure. Eucalyptus coronata, or the crowned mallee, has a very limited range and is only found inside the Fitzgerald National Park. Known from just three populations, the total number of plants is estimated to be just 140. It is classified as rare and vulnerable, with its major threats being roading and wildfire. The crowned mallee is easily distinguished from similar species by the strongly ribbed buds and fruit, which are three to five centimeters wide. Last up, we have Eucalyptus confirminata, or the coast marlock. Yeah, I don't know, it's just weird. This species is easily recognizable by its ridiculously large horn-shaped flower caps. These flower caps are always around four times as long as they are wide. It occurs in sparse, small populations between two of the park's tallest peaks, Middle Mount Barron and the Warungarup Range on the very exposed, harsh coastal sites. The huge, woody mass of the fruit is up to 6.5 centimeters wide. Huge! This species and 10 others are characterized by having fruit that are fused together at the tips. This bit here, look at it, fused. While these are some of the strangest eucalypts found in the national park and indeed the entire continent, 
they are only a small sample of the total eucalypts found here. These few species represent very clearly that the genus Eucalyptus is incredibly diverse, both in the environments where they can be found and also in form and shape. The Fitzgerald National Park and, well, to be honest, the entire southwest of the continent is a biodiversity hotspot that is internationally recognised. Will one of these be Eucalypt of the Year? I'm Steve from The Tree Projects and you keep on Eucan! Euclid Australia runs the Euclid of the Year competition. Have you ever thought about how special your local eucalypt is? And how it fits into the complex and diverse world of the eucalypts? Now is the time to get ready for Eucalypt of the Year 2021. There's also uh, two links. Uh, you can click on them and subscribe if you like as well. But uh, I'm out. Catch up.